Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Unfollowing Mum. I am really excited about this episode because I feel like this is going to answer a lot of questions for people and give some real insight into boundaries and perhaps insight that I don't have because I have a no contact relationship with my mother. I, I don't have a contact at all, as most of you will know. And I feel like there are so many people out there who do have a perhaps difficult relationship with their mother and want to put in place some boundaries to protect themselves from that or want to be able to get to a place where they don't end up estranged like I did. And to help us with that today is Dr. Michelle Deering, who is a psychologist and a mother-daughter relationship personal trainer and expert. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Harriet. I'm so looking forward to spending time with you and your listeners. Oh, thank you so much for coming on the yeah. podcast. You talk a lot online about boundaries and creating healthy relationships between mothers and daughters. So before we jump into that, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, well, as a mother-daughter relationship personal trainer, what my focus is on is educating, equipping, and encouraging moms worldwide on tools and strategies that can actually help them make better connections with their daughters in a way that that breaks generational cycles of pain. And so that's what I'm all about. Um, in addition to that, I'm uh, married to my BFF hubby for the last mm -hmm. 30 years. It's going on 31 this year. And um, we have twin daughters who are three weeks away from graduating from college. So we're pretty stoked in our household. Oh, wow. That is amazing. And I love yeah. hearing you talk about equipping mums, because especially as somebody who is on this journey of cycle breaking parenting, it's very yeah. difficult for me at times to not show up as my mother and to break that generational pattern and to say, actually, OK, when I do show up as my mum, because sometimes it's inevitable. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. yeah, those are the those are the blueprints that were laid down for me. And it's really difficult to step out of that space, reflect on my behavior and say, OK, how do I how, how do I do this moving forward <laughs> without repeating those toxic behaviors that have caused so much damage in our relationship and in my life and growing mm -hmm. up? Mm -hmm. So can you explain a bit? to us about boundaries because boundaries is a term that we hear a lot online and I get I must get it at least once a week <laughs> from toxic parents who are angry with me yes. with the kind of content I create who will say to me that's just your way of controlling people and it's such a misconception about boundaries so can you explain to us a bit about boundaries and what that term actually means yeah I just I just love this topic because um, anyone who hangs around me in my personal circles or professional circles they know I am so big on boundaries and the way I kind of think about boundaries is if you look at just existence and life, nature around us, boundaries are everywhere. I'm sitting on a stool right now. That's a boundary that's holding me up so I'm not flat on my butt, right? So boundaries are everywhere. And I find that there are these misconceptions that folks have. I call them myths that folks have about them, four main ones. The first myth you mentioned that, you know, I guess I'd categorize as boundaries are bad, but we need them. They're good, actually. Uh, that boundaries are not necessary and they are necessary. And I'll explain, we'll get into that in a little bit. And the third uh, myth is that boundaries prevent closeness in relationships. That's a big one, a big myth that I want to make sure that we address today. And then the fourth one is that boundaries are always rigid. And my contention is that boundaries can be both rigid and flexible. And it all depends. So, but to dive more into that, if you look at, you know, let's tackle the, the boundaries are, are, are preventing closeness. If we look at nature, and if your listeners are not driving a car right now as they're listening, <laughs> but if they were to put both their hands together, all right, you'd say, my hands are close, okay? The, the palms are touching each other, but in actuality, there are, at a microscopic level, gaps in between, such that when I rub my hands, you hear that sound. So in essence, those gaps can actually facilitate closeness. They don't make you close. I mean, if there were no if there were no gaps, we would be sliding by each other. It's just the law of physics. That's the way we are. So that's one of the ways in which I I think about boundaries. Um, but as it relates to mother daughter relationships, 
I want to go into the how boundaries kind of work. When your child is born, actually, when you conceive your child, a boundary has been formed. She's connected to your in your uterus by your umbilical cord. So right there, there's a separation that has to happen in order for your daughter to get the nutrients from you. All right. So now she's now she's born. You as her mom are her first experience of femaleness. All right. But she's now outside of you. There's a boundary, the air between you, but you still need to connect. And there are ways in which you can do that. And as a daughter grows from infancy onward, there are different ways in which she now has to develop and form her own identity, which will be separate from yours. And where I find that moms, a lot of times, myself included, get tripped up is that we don't recognize when those separations are happening. And because we so identify with this other female entity that we have birthed, we get our lines crossed. And that's where the unhealthy relationships start happening in, you know, minor to extreme ways uh, where those boundaries are crossed. And that's where I contend that if your relationship or if you have ongoing tension with your mom, that's because certain boundaries have been crossed uh, in different ways, both mentally, physically, um, emotionally, spiritually, the whole bit our whole entity there is this myth as you say around boundaries being bad boundaries being Mm -hmm. a problem or boundaries being your way of trying to control other people Mm -hmm. or it's i had somebody comment a few weeks ago oh it's just you setting in some arbitrary rules i was like but they're not Mm -hmm. arbitrary they're a type of rule for what i deem as acceptable behavior towards me i'm not controlling your behavior i'm saying Mm -hmm. i won't tolerate that and that's the difference and that's setting up a boundary and there's nothing inherently wrong with that my children have it with me and I'll often talk about this on the podcast that my eldest child he's 12 Mm -hmm. he will sort of say to me I want the shower door closed now and I'm like dude go ahead I will knock on that door if I need to ask you anything I Mm -hmm. will knock on his bedroom door and that is a type of boundary it's asking for a little bit of freedom a little bit of space a little bit of independence to grow into Mm -hmm. his own person and to have his own personal space and that's Mm -hmm. a very physical example of it Mm -hmm. but for myself I was incredibly enmeshed with my mum so it was Mm -hmm. really difficult for me to ever have any boundaries with my mother Mm -hmm. and that made Mm -hmm. the relationship incredibly toxic at what age do you think it is important to start setting boundaries with your children I think you touched on it a little bit there Mm -hmm. yeah uh, actually it starts in utero yeah (laughs) okay we talked about the umbilical cord but okay let's pass go beyond that okay your your daughter is born it's going to be important for you to kind of look at the fact that you're at each age range, there are different developmental needs uh, that are needed by just children in general, but a daughter specifically. Uh, and and establishing those boundaries are going to be, um, have to be tailored according to that. So for instance, what a, a, a toddler needs in terms of boundaries. Okay. I don't think any mother, any, any well-intentioned mother would want their child going, running into the street with yep. oncoming traffic. So of course you're going to set up a boundary. You see that line on the street <laughs> or that curb? You, you don't go there until, and, and you teach them how to look at the stoplight, et cetera, and so forth. The stoplight in and of itself is an imposed boundary to keep people safe. And, and that's the thing. I if, if folks walk away with the whole thing is that boundaries, as it relates to relationships, are really about keeping you safe because they determine where you begin and end. It's going to be really important as you're trying to establish this is that you need to take a look at yourself as to where you begin and end, okay? Because you are not your daughter. You are not your son. You are not your child. You are mom, okay, Mm -hmm. an individual. And And then after you look at that, then you need to start looking at what messages were you given about boundaries growing up? Because I contend, and you alluded to it earlier, there's a blueprint that we're all born into. We don't ask to be born into it. It just is what it is. And some of those things can be 
can help you optimally grow and some things can hinder your growth. Mm -hmm. um, but so in addition to looking at yourself personally about you know, where you begin and end and identifying the messages, I want to address one of the big lies that we have about motherhood, uh, which is, which I believe is that moms need to be selfless. Mm -hmm. And my contention is that moms need to be more self-filled in yeah. terms of knowing more about themselves and understanding not only what makes them tick, but do they like the way they're ticking? <laughs> you yeah, know, is, yeah. it, is it working for them? If you find yourself constantly repeating certain patterns and you're not pleased with it, then that ought to give you reason to, uh, my mantra is pause to consider the body of your behavior because that's saying something. And if you don't pay attention to it, then you're going to inadvertently, again, start repeating the generational patterns that have been passed down to you. Yeah, it's really difficult, isn't it? Because as we say, we talk about that blueprint, we talk about mm -hmm. pausing and reflecting. And I think mm -hmm. I I didn't have that behavior modeled to me at mm -hmm. all, to pause, to reflect. It was very much my mum's way or the highway. And especially as I became older and mm -hmm. started to try and set those boundaries, started to try and create a sense of identity for myself, that was when there was a really huge pushback. And mm -hmm. for me, I think that has left me very much with a lack of self-identity, which people laugh at when I talk about that because they're like, but you seem so confident and you seem so this. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. it's a, a great front, I guess, in a way, because knowing myself in my 30s is something I've really had to work on because of that toxic relationship yes. that I had with my mother. I never feel like I really developed a sense of self until I started to pull away. And that was me setting my boundaries by pulling away because she couldn't respect my need to mm -hmm. develop and grow as an individual. Right. And, 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 and I hear you on that. That's part of the, there are many different types of of terms used for different kinds of boundary crossings, breaches. And in your case, you used the word enmeshed. That is one that insidiously just wipes away a daughter's identity. So I hear you on that. Totally hear you. Yeah, on it is. And it's it's something that I've I've mentioned a few times on the podcast and talked about enmeshment. And it's a term that I guess not many people really know or really think about until perhaps they've started working on themselves in therapy and they've started mm -hmm. unpacking all of this baggage, if you like, that they've been left with through this relationship with their mother. In my case, it became quite extreme and I have become estranged from my mum. I have no desire to build a relationship with her and I've made my peace with that. But I think for somebody who has perhaps a very difficult relationship with a mother and is looking to set boundaries in place mm -hmm. when they've struggled to do so, do you have any advice on an adult child who is looking to try and set boundaries with their mother, who is making that very difficult and crossing those boundaries? How do you, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Again, I want to, and I think the word you alluded to earlier was toxic relationship. Mm. That word gets tossed around a lot. And so mm. I want to kind of put some boundaries around yeah. how we talk about it today. A toxic relationship is one in which at any point in time, either interacting with that person or whatnot, there's a what I call a destabilization of your sense of self, your sense of safety, and your sense of security. Mm -hmm. So if at any point in time, that gets ruffled. I mean, for some women, it might be, you know, they're in the presence of their mom and they get like physically sick or others, they might be in the presence of their mom and they're stoic, but then they leave. And then a few hours later, they just seem to have like a decompensation where they just like totally lose it. You know, okay. You know, it can go either or, or something in between. For others, you know, all the tension, I know when with my mom, when she was alive, you know, all the tension would go to my shoulders and neck, okay, because I knew I was bracing myself for the criticism that was going to come in some kind of shape yeah. or form, okay? So one of the ways that you can, I guess, create and enforce boundaries, whatever situation you find yourself in, is first to kind of understand yourself as a person in what it is what is it that you need? And Maslow has these hier this hierarchy of needs. The base of it, the base of the triangle, 
at the bottom of the triangle has to do with, you know, safety, security, and being fed. And even though he was referring to it as physical feeding, I'm referring to it as uh, an emotional, mental feeding that's nourishing and life-giving. So you kind of have to identify, one, what what is it that makes you feel safe to be yourself and really think about that? And then two, you want to think about when do you feel secure or insecure? And then the third question you want to ask yourself is how do you want to be fed? Now, there are different ways to feed a child. <laughs> you can ram the bottle in their mouth or stick, you know, your, your breast in their mouth, or you can do it gently or you can check to see, are you hungry or you're not, <laughs> you know, and read the body. So that's really important as you think about your interactions with your mom, because I believe that it's hard for you to put a boundary around something and protect it if you don't know what you're protecting. So really answering those questions, those three questions, again, being what makes you feel safe to be yourself? When do you feel secure or insecure? Kind of identifying what the scenario is Okay, and then how do you want to be fed in those moments? And then what you want to do is you want to do things that will create the kind of environment for yourself so that you can have the space to promote healing and or health in your own life first. That's equivalent to putting the mask on your face first in an airplane. Yes. So you have oxygen so yeah. you can attend to everybody else. Okay. And I think you even said earlier about how, you know, when you show up as yourself or you find yourself showing up as your mom, mm -hmm. you know, you, you got to know. Yeah. Okay. And start there. You know, one of the things for me, and I, I've talked about this online where, you know, for me, one big break for me uh, with my mom, and that's what kind of started it was when I got to college having had years of the holidays in her presence where everything had to be her way. And I was the youngest one, okay, that she just used to, okay, now play the piano for everyone. Now sing a song for mm -hmm. everyone. You know, I was on, spot, on the spot. And if I wasn't up to it, I was shamed and degraded. So I decided when I got to college, this is my one chance. Yeah. <laughs> To not go home for the holidays, but I had to have the conversation. Mm -hmm. And it was my attempt, and I didn't go for three years. It was my attempt to, to provide myself with the kind of holiday space that I needed so that I could just feel a sense of myself. Yeah. Okay, so so that's that's a long-winded answer to your question. But it's the perfect answer because it makes so much sense. It's about looking at what you need. And I think I was always brought up that if I was looking at what I needed as opposed to considering what everybody else wanted and sitting in the fawn response and people-pleasing, mm -hmm. that was selfish. Yeah. That was me being ungrateful, me being spoiled. Everything that I owed to my mother for my existence mm -hmm. was being breached there because I should be putting her needs above my needs. Mm -hmm. And that in itself is when the boundary just doesn't exist. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, it's so difficult. What, what should you do? How is a good way to communicate to your mother if she is crossing your boundaries, if you do still have contact with her and mm -hmm. you want to stay in a place where you can build a relationship that works for both of you? Perhaps you need to be limited contact. Perhaps you need mm -hmm. to be stepping away a little bit, but what mm -hmm. is a good way to communicate without it becoming a big dramatic scene? Yeah. You know, I, and this is the kind of stuff that I, when I work with moms, uh, adult moms who are having issues with their mom, um, as well as because they see it spilling over into their interactions mm. with their daughter. Um, but one of the things that I usually tell moms is find a time where it's kind of like neutral, <laughs> as neutral yeah, as you yeah. can get, and do it in a preparatory kind of way where you're saying, mom, you know, when you have a moment, I I'd really like to talk to you about something. And then what time would be good for you? Do it on her turf. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if it's really toxic, I might suggest something different, but kind of just do it and find a time that works for the both of you. And then when you get there, you have to enter it realizing that you're not talking to another adult. I use that word in big quotations. You're talking to someone who's hurting. 
mm. and wounded in her own way. Some of the stuff you may understand, some of the stuff you may not understand, but just realize that you're not talking to someone who's in their full sense of their adult self. And so I say that because you're really talking to someone who's more along the lines of, you know, someone younger. And if you can approach it as not in a condescending way and just say, you know, mom, when X happens, I feel, therefore, mm. mom, I'm, I'm going to fill in the blanks, like what I said to my mom uh, that holiday. Mom, when I'm home for the holidays, everything, you're asking me to clean up all this stuff and whatnot, and I'm tired after a hard semester. I feel like I can't get any rest when I'm at home for the holidays. Therefore, I'm going to spend the holidays with this friend. Yeah. I don't know. There's such a fear around doing that when you have a very <laughs> difficult relationship with mm -hmm. your mother, a yes. real fear around doing it. And I guess that comes from a place of self-confidence. And again, going back to knowing yourself and working mm -hmm. on yourself first. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of my listeners will probably hear that and think, <laughs> yeah, I could not have that conversation with my mother. <laughs> like... It's crazy mm -hmm. toxic over, like if I'd have said that mm -hmm. to my mom, she'd have laughed at me. She, you know, it it would have really amplified her toxicity because she would have taken great pleasure in ripping that down and ripping that apart. The only way that I could think to protect myself from that was to become no contact from her and was to cut contact, step back and step into focusing on myself and my family mm -hmm. and letting that relationship go by the way, really. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you can do? Like, Yeah, you know, as I, as I listen to, and again, realize that every mom's journey, every adult mom's journey is a journey as a daughter. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be different for everyone. There are themes, but it's really different for everyone. So anything that I'm saying right now is not meant to be a blanket statement yeah. um, because, you know, everyone's got a different story and life experience. But as I heard you say, your mom would have chuckled and ripped everything apart. My mom did her, what I call the deathly silence, <laughs> where it was almost yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like Darth Vader. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. and I just felt myself sliced in the silence, mm. for lack of a better word. So I, I get you <laughs> where you're there. And if you're listening to this and you're thinking, I could never say that to my mom. That's one of the reasons why it's going to be important for you to do the self-reflection to figure out, okay, what is your limit? What is your line? Like if it's, if it's not to talk with her one-on-one, -on -one, well, maybe then you step back and you might write her a note. I, I'm, and I, and when I say a note for different folks, they feel fine with texting others you know, feel fine with writing an actual letter, you know, yep, it, yep. You know it's, it, it varies in today's technology. But then what you want to do is you want to get um, support to back you up. That's yeah. going to be key and really find people who in your life who are safe spaces and places for yourself. Um, knowing that, and this is the third thing, knowing that there's going to be pushback. Mm -hmm. uh, and for lack of a better word, it's like if you have a toddler and you say no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're going to push the boundary at some in some way. Um, every child is different. I'm not doing a blanket statement on on kids, but in some way that might get tested. And mm -hmm. so, if you can expect that, then um, and have the 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 support of the support for your safe uh, safe place and space with other people, then you'll be able to just stand in the midst and, and <laughs> take that onslaught of whatever it is that's coming. The other thing that I, I at least want to make mention of is that it's going to go differently for everyone. It can be done. One of the things that I do as a mother-daughter relationship personals trainer is that when, when moms come to me and they're at their wits ends as to what to do, I take them through my life mirror remedy, which is just this five-step process where I get you grounded in what's actually going on. And then we target uh, different things and help you establish those boundaries. And there are ways in which to do that. Each mom is different, as I said, so I don't want to make a, a blanket statement about it. Yeah, that makes sense. And as you say, every situation is different. I think there's, there is, 
a real power in realizing that every situation is different. I think there's also a real power in saying, okay, I'm enforcing these boundaries for me Mm -hmm. because I need this and this is what I know that I need, but that there's nothing selfish about that. There's nothing toxic in yourself. And especially if that means that you have to step away in order to enforce Mm -hmm. that boundary. Mm -hmm. I get, I hear a lot of people say, oh, this talk about boundaries and it's, it's all about instilling rules. And then when you can't follow those rules, you're punished with a lack of contact. And I think it's very important to establish that that isn't a punishment. That's a protection. Correct. And Having said that, know that the feelings that you're going to feel, whether it's fear, guilt, remorse, Mm -hmm. the best way that you can honor your mom is to actually become who you're meant to be. Whether or not she receives it, believes it, wants to see it, derides it. That is the best way that you can honor your mom in the long run. And I hope, moms, as you're listening to this, that you really sit with that and take that in. Because you were never designed or or destined to be her. You're you. And the best thing that you can do is discover you and be you. And that is enough. Your daughter needs you to do that. Well, I think that's really powerful. That's really powerful to know that you are okay in becoming who you are meant to be and not trying to be what your mother wants you to be, expects you to be, demands you to be. And that, that for me, yeah, that for me is huge. And I hope that my listeners will hear that, know that and feel the truth in that because no matter how you get to being you and whether she's a part of it or not, that is so important. Dr. Deering, you have been fantastic. Thank you so much for your help. I feel like this is going to be a really important episode for people who are struggling with boundaries and wanting to understand how to put those in place and perhaps struggling with the guilt of having to enforce those boundaries right. because there's so much guilt and shame surrounding it. Can you let my listeners know where they can find you across social media? Yeah, um, you can find me on Instagram at and it's the at sign mother daughter connections, which is the name of my podcast. And then um, one of the things I'm doing this year is because I'm worldwide on the podcast in over 35 countries, I really just like getting to meet people one on one on Zoom. So I have uh, been doing what I call coffee chats with moms. So you can sign up for a coffee chat with me. Uh, it's like 15 minutes where they can just go to the URL bit, B-I-T dot L-Y backslash coffee chat meetup. And you just click on there, schedule a time and we'll meet up. <laughs> uh, and then the other th- way in which folks, I'm really active, I'm active on Instagram, but I really get into more nitty gritty stuff on my, in my email community. So I also have, if you're, you know, the PDF I have is uh, called Quick Guides to Less Arguments. And it was designed for moms who have daughters who are tween teens during those times. But the principles that are in there can be applied to if you have a daughter who's younger or if you have a daughter who's older. Um, And that PDF is called The Quick Guide to Less Arguments. And you can find that at bit.ly backslash less arguments. So those are the three ways that folks can stay in touch with me. And I will put all of these links, guys, into the bio so that you can get those quickly if you need to. But Dr. Deering, thank you so much for your time. I am sure so many people will have found this incredibly useful, as have I. So I am going to say see you next week, guys. And thank you for being a part of this community. I've been Harriet Shearsmith, and together we are Unfollowing Mum.